The sudden departure of Pat Gelsinger from Intel, Elon Musk, and OpenAI's escalating feud takes a new twist. New budget-friendly GPUs that are shaking up the market. The Game Awards are just around the corner. Stay tuned. There's a lot to unpack. Elon Musk has filed a new motion in his lawsuit against OpenAI. Musk is seeking to halt the company's transition to a for-profit model. According to his lawyers, this transformation could leave the company without sufficient funds to cover potential damages if Musk wins the case. They also request the judge to address practices that they claim violate U.S. antitrust laws. The lawsuit also accuses OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, of benefiting his own interests, which could jeopardize the company's financial stability. Furthermore, they allege that OpenAI and Microsoft have pressured investors to refrain from funding competitors, thus violating the Sherman Act. Musk also claims that OpenAI may have improperly used confidential information obtained through its relationship with Microsoft, a move that could contravene the Clayton Act. They even point out that Microsoft secured a seat on OpenAI's board to coordinate strategic decisions between the two companies. OpenAI spokesperson Hannah Wong stated in an email to The Verge, Elon's fourth attempt, which again recycles the same baseless complaints, continues to be utterly without merit. Meanwhile, this dispute continues to unfold with implications that could shake both the legal landscape and competition in the artificial intelligence sector. Blue Sky takes action against fake profiles. As more celebrities and influencers join Blue Sky, the rapidly growing social platform is facing an increase in identity theft and account verification issues. Currently, Blue Sky does not utilize a verification badge system like Twitter or X, leading to confusion among users. Instead, it relies on verified domains and usernames. Blue Sky concluded by stating, We also hear your feedback. Users want more ways to verify their identity beyond domain verification. We're exploring additional options to enhance account verification, and we hope to share more shortly. One of the most shocking news so far is Pat Gelsinger's departure from Intel. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel since 2021, and with over four decades at the company, announced his retirement effective December 1, 2024. According to Bloomberg, after discussing Intel's challenges, Gelsinger chose to retire amid possible pressure from the board of directors. During his tenure, he faced difficulties such as technological delays, a weak position in the AI chip market, and issues with processors and semiconductor manufacturing. The interim leadership will be handled by David Zinsner and Michelle Johnston Holthouse as co-CEOs while the board searches for a replacement. One positive impact of Gelsinger's retirement at Intel could be a renewal of leadership. This departure might pave the way for a fresher vision and renewed strategies to compete with NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, and Qualcomm. Additionally, it presents an opportunity for cultural rebuilding. A new administration could revitalize trust among customers and employees. However, some negative impacts could arise as well. There may be instability in leadership. The abrupt change could create uncertainty at a critical decision-making moment for the company. There is also the loss of experience. Gelsinger provided deep understanding and expertise regarding Intel and its ecosystem, which is difficult to replace quickly. The instability at Intel, the poor performance of its 13th and 14th generation chips, and Pat Gelsinger's sudden departure have resulted in a reduction of its stock value from $34 to just 22. And even though neither you nor I nor Sam Altman wanted it, the possibility of ads in ChatGPT is approaching. According to the Financial Times, CFO Sarah Fryer told the newspaper that she is considering an advertising business model. So far, this is not a confirmed plan, but they are exploring the possibility as the current business model that OpenAI operates will not be sufficient for the near future. There is only a limited amount of billions of dollars that investors may be willing to disperse. Additionally, the FT report highlighted a recent hiring of Shivakumar Venkataraman, a former Google employee, as Google search ads leader with 21 years of experience in this field. In a recent informal talk at Harvard Business School, Sam Altman said it would be a last resort. I'm not saying OpenAI would never consider ads, but I don't like them in general. And I think that ads plus AI is sort of uniquely unsettling to me. Intel has introduced its new ARC B580 and B570 graphics cards, and if you are someone who has been searching for a good, attractive, and affordable graphics card with plenty of dedicated memory, this could be your option. According to Intel, these GPUs are optimized for modern gaming at 1440p, featuring advanced technologies like XeSS2, which I will explain how it works in a moment. 
second-generation ray tracing, and XMX AI engines. But the most appealing aspect of these cards is their prices. The ARC B580, which will be released this December, will have 12 GB of dedicated DDR6 memory, while the ARC B570 will have 10 GB of DDR6. Intel claims that compared to the previous generation, the ARC series BGPU will offer 70% more performance per core and 50% more performance per watt. In comparison to competitors, the B580 provides up to 32% more performance per dollar. It will also feature an app where you can perform basic or even advanced overclocking, improved cooling, and silent GPUs. The XESS2 technology refers to XE Super Sampling, is Intel's AI-powered upscaling solution designed to enhance gaming performance and visual quality. It features three key components. Super Resolution, which uses AI to upscale image resolution, Frame generation, which interpolates frames to improve smoothness, and low latency, which reduces input lag in games. This can be compared to NVIDIA's DLSS3 and AMD's FSR3 technologies. The ARC B580 with 12GB DDR6 will be priced at approximately $250 USD, undercutting the $390 of the RTX 4060 Ti and the $269 USD of the RX 7600. The ARC B570, which will be released in a month with 10 GB DDR6, will be priced at just $220. Of course, we need to wait to see how these new cards actually perform, but they definitely seem like a very attractive option for budget gaming PCs. But the most important is, what you think about these new GPUs. The Game Awards are just around the corner. On December 12th, we will see the live event of the Game Awards, hosted once again by Jeff Keighley. The ceremony will honor the best in the video game industry during a year filled with impressive titles. Among the nominees for Game of the Year are Astro Bot, Bellatro, Black Myth, Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor, Refantasio. Black Myth Wukong has generated divided opinions regarding its nomination for Game of the Year at the 2024 Game Awards. This title, inspired Inspired by The Journey to the West is the first Chinese video game to share this category, representing a significant achievement for the country's industry. It is also nominated in categories such as Best Direction, Best Art Direction, and Best Action Game. Although it broke sales records with over 20 million copies sold and marked commercial milestones, its critical reception was moderate. The nomination of this game has sparked debate over how candidates are selected at events of this magnitude. We have included a video in the description of our honest analysis of its impact in the gaming industry. December 12th will undoubtedly be one of the most anticipated events of the entire Game Awards. The Startup World Labs, founded by renowned AI pioneer Fei-Fei Li, has introduced a groundbreaking system that transforms photos into fully interactive and customizable 3D scenes. This technology essentially lets users step into an image and explore it as if it were a video game, complete with features like adjustable depth of field and dynamic animations. What sets World Labs apart from similar tools is its ability to maintain object consistency and respect basic physics. For instance, if you move around an object, its sides aren't flat or static. Instead, the AI intelligently recreates what would naturally appear around it. We tested it out in the lab, and it's not only fun but also incredibly exciting. To give it a try yourself, I've included the website link below. But here's the big question. How do you feel about AI becoming more involved in creating environments, like in video games? Or would you love the freedom to create wild, imaginative worlds without needing to know how to code? Let me know your thoughts about this thrilling, not-so-distant future.